Uh, I've been coming here uh, to London and Oxford uh, mostly uh, for personal reason. Uh, we have our uh, three kids going to school here and it develops to become something else because I want to be productive, I want to be uh, doing something and uh, got the opportunity to be involved in Oxford United. Having said that, back home I'm uh, very uh, uh, busy with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry and if we are to um, summarize it, it's basically bridging the gap of understanding between Indonesia and the world and the world to Indonesia. But um, you know, the beauty about you know, being in Oxford, you can also see a lot of other things, including what Oxford University has to offer. And apparently, as we have uh, spoken to a lot of the leadership here, they are also uh, following what the government is talking about, which is uh, doing the Indo-Pacific tilt. So when we talk to the head of social sciences, uh, they talk about Southeast Asian studies, you know, division, uh, and we talk about what we can do to work together. And then over here, uh, we're talking about uh, the Islamic studies, uh, because uh, as you may know, Indonesia has uh, 85 to 88 uh, percent Muslim population. It is in fact uh, the largest population uh, in the world of Muslim being a non-Muslim uh, uh, country. We are a secular country. So it's a, it's a long story, uh, but it's a natural thing to do. It sounds as if um, actually your relationship is going to be with Oxford and Oxfordshire, with the football club, with the university, mm -hmm. and I imagine with the, the local authorities as well as to what you can achieve. Yes, and uh, I would like to start actually from uh, the bottom part, which is relationship uh, with the people of Oxford because that's basically what attracts me uh, to come to Oxford United with a uh, couple of other investors. Uh, Eric Tohir is one of them. And what's interesting about this Oxford United, uh, the uh, investors are also coming from other countries in ASEAN, such as Vietnam, as well as uh, Thailand. Uh, of course, uh, Tiger being the chairman. So we thought this is a, a unique opportunity to work together, not only UK, Indonesia, but actually UK, ASEAN, and within ASEAN. But ultimately, it comes down how you build the community, how you build the fan base. I see even not being an expert uh, of football, I can see a lot of room for improvement. I think uh, the pride of Oxford has to be one of them, Oxford United. Uh, we have made uh, quite uh, uh, improvements in the last uh, two seasons. Uh, Thanks to everybody, but uh, I think in a couple of seasons, sooner the better, we would love to go up uh, the, uh, the playing field uh, in the league. Yeah. Are you excited about the possibility or the prospect of Oxford United being the first Indonesian-owned football club in, in Britain? I think I'm very excited, uh, but at the same time, very honoured, really. I think uh, in terms of being involved, we have been involved for three years uh, as a minority investor. We have the opportunity to become majority. But we think it comes along with uh, you know, responsibility to work together with the management team, other board members, uh, investors, and certainly uh, the fans uh, uh, to make sure that Oxford is performing uh, on the pitch and off the pitch for sustainability purpose. So very excited. Um, I don't look at it as being the first you know, Indonesian necessarily, but it is more on what we can probably do uh, to Oxford United that can make all of us proud. You mentioned the word sustainability. Um, as far as the football club is concerned, it, that isn't merely financially, but would also, when we're talking about COP26, would also be in terms of environmentally as well. I think so, because um, you know, we Indonesians are very proud about what we can offer uh, in terms of uh, helping the world uh, in this climate change transition. Not many people know, but we believe that we have 80% of carbon uh, credit possibility or carbon reserve, however you look at it. We have a lot of mangrove, peatlands, uh, tropical forests. So we thought if we were to do anything over here, especially UK also has a lot of detailed plan in this transition. I think working together and try to kind of like materialize it uh, in possible uh, future Oxford home, Oxford United home, they'll be uh, fabulous and they'll be something that we can look back and create sort of like a you know, legacy for all of us. There's always talk here about where Oxford United might play. Um, a new home, if that were to, to come, would that have to be, for example, carbon neutral, have uh, very little, if any, detriment to the environment? 
It has to be really because uh, Oxford has its own ambition. Uh, probably even sooner than 2050. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're talking about 2040, right? So that means that you know we just have to support it, uh, and it is uh, really uh, possible, right? The technology is there, uh, even now much more efficient, uh, and the people really want it. Uh, and if you come from our part of the world, uh, two thirds of the population are young population, and being in Oxford, you know a lot of young population being a university town. And plus, what I understand is that you know the population of Oxford will only increase uh, significantly uh, in the near future. And when I talk a lot of people uh, in the quote-unquote central government uh, in London, uh, I see that this Oxford-Cambridge arch uh, is, is, is real. Uh, so from the financial sustainability side, it makes sense. But I think from the environmental sustainability side, we can actually make a difference. So it is not about trying to comply or anything, but it's trying to make an impact uh, that we can be proud of here. Yeah. Is it your belief that a new home for Oxford United has to be part of what you can achieve with the club? I think so. Um, of course, the uh, performance uh, on the pitch has to take a lead, and that's why I'm really uh, supportive <coughs> with the management team, also the leadership of uh, our manager and our squad. Right. We have to invest in young players uh, going forward. This has to be the main uh, focus or the main key performance indicator. Having said that, uh, we see this as a totality. Uh, we believe off the pitch is as important, not only on the financial uh, commerciality, uh, you know, viability, uh, but also making sure that you stand for something. Right. So when they look at Oxford United, I'm sure you have a lot of other clubs. Uh, you know, there are very good you know, in different leagues. But we want to make sure that when they think about Oxford United, they think about a club that is building brick per brick uh, uh, and finally get there. But we get there by doing the right things uh, and, and again, uh, make everybody uh, happy and belong to the process. Where is there when you say get there? <laughs> Well, you know, we are not in a position to exactly tell where, but it has to be in Oxford. Um, and we hope it is not far away from the uh, current uh, place, right? Uh, we need to work <coughs> with the county, with the authorities, uh, to get the proper uh, 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 land to do it. Uh, and we need to do proper planning. And we want to involve uh, not only the community to make sure that there are a lot of communal areas, but we want to also talk to a lot of people who have done this before from the uh, uh, you know, stadium point of view, but also who have done it before to make it eco and su sustainable uh, uh, also uh, in, the, uh, in the project itself. And what about on the pitch? What would your target be there? I think yeah, uh, if we can make it between this uh, two years uh, to go up uh, the league, that will be ideal because uh, we have the uh, uh, stadium you know, up until uh, 2026, right? So you know, we have a you know, few years to get there, but when you get there, only then it starts to make sense to have your own stadium, get the fan base, get the community. So I think you know, this uh, uh, on the pitch is very crucial uh, to make sure that while we are designing, getting the approvals, having this ambition, to go eco-friendly uh, and sustainable, this one uh, has to happen. You said you're not a football expert, but you're not new to football in, in, yeah. in many respects, and, and neither are the people that you work with. Well, look, um, you know, I support uh, friends and family, uh, actually, in this uh, football uh, initiatives, right? Uh, whether internationally, um, uh, you know, we are indirectly involved in a European uh, major football club, uh, and also in Australian uh, one, uh, a major football club over there. And we have few uh, football clubs that we are uh, involved in uh, in Indonesia. I think the principle is pretty much the same. Uh, you want to do well uh, on the pitch, off the pitch. And it is just how ambitious you want to be and how long term you want to be, really. If you decide you want to do it you know, short term, you can do that. There are many ways to get there short term. But if you want to do it uh, in the long run, you actually have to build uh, the infrastructure uh, to get there. And I think it's more fun, right? And, and I think uh, our Oxford uh, community, uh, uh, fan base, uh, authorities, uh, 
kind of like that uh, when I uh, speak with them. Yeah. How do you think, given you're going to speak at COP26 and you're representing your country there, how do you think business and sport sits with the importance of uh, arresting climate change? I think it has a lot of connectivity, uh, a lot of correlation, in fact, right? I mean, whatever we talk about right now, we have to think about post-pandemic, right? And then post-COP26 very soon, right? Um, back home and over here, we like the blue sky. I mean, a lot of things we cannot control. Um, but in the morning it was raining, but now look at this. Um, and we want to keep it that way. Uh, and I think, um, you know, I'm late 40s, right? Have three kids. We all have kids, right? Uh, we want to leave back something that, uh, you know, uh, they can be proud of, right? Uh, and sports also is a healthy uh, Thing. It's a healthy business, right? So connecting sports uh, with uh, climate transition is just the right thing to do. Uh, and, and I think uh, you feel good about uh, doing that. And when I go and speak at uh, COP26, uh, we're going to talk a lot about how Indonesia can contribute and to be able to also contribute in a very, very small way uh, in Oxford uh, uh, County, I think is something that uh, we really want to be a part of. So I think the connectivity is there, it's very much correlated. Um, you want to be healthy physically, but you want to breathe uh, a nice air as well.